Hey guys, welcome back. I got another refurb video I'm going to be doing up. I found some of these old corn stalk cutters from the 1800s, early 1900s. And well, I wound up getting them from a antique store and I've got got kind of curious about them and went ahead and got a hold of them and the handles are well pretty crappy until this one's held on by it looks like quarter 20 bolts or number 10s or something on that lines and it's cut out real bad so you can tell someone's tried to rehandle this one this one I don't know if it's it's not, I'm pretty sure someone tried doing the same thing here as well. It's all taped up and whatnot, but this is actually really tight. And this one was, oh, what was it? Uh, Henry, Henry Diston and Sons. Now I was kind of curious about this, uh, curious about this one because it actually had the name of the maker on it. It's actually stamped out in in the edge on the flat part of this, and I looked them up, and they were primarily saws. They primarily dealt with saws and made them and whatnot. And they also had made these, but I could not hardly find anything on these. I don't know the era it, it, this was these were made in, or specifically when they made it. So. I was pretty curious about it, but I asked, all I could see was, all I could find was images of it, and no, really no other information about it, so hopefully I'll be able to find out a little, find out a little bit more about them later on, but I am definitely wanting to go ahead and get these going. I got an idea on how the handle's supposed to look, uh, that's how I, uh, now, uh, from the photos that I was able to find, I was able to find out what the handles, the original handles were supposed to look like. So that will help out greatly in this process. That way I can get it at least as close to original as possible. And that's always my priority whenever I go to do stuff, something like this. And as you can tell with my other videos as well, on my knife refurb refurbishing videos, you can see that as well. And... So I'm going to go ahead and disassemble these and oh I won't be able to put these in a uh, vinegar bath because I don't have a large enough tote to put these in. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and use a wire wheel and a drill and go ahead and clean them up that way. And later on if I had to clean them up a little bit more I will but later on I will apply mineral oil onto these. I found out that that does help quite a bit. And this one, though, I wasn't able to find any kind of prints on it. But maybe, maybe later I will after I after I'm able to clean it up more. But this one here has had a lot of damage, and have that a lot of damage, and has seen quite a bit of use. And mo it looks like mostly improper use. And on the back here. You can tell, I don't know if you can see it in, in the video here, but someone had taken something else and beat it across this edge from about here to here as if they were trying to uh, use it as a chopper. And they did a terrible, terrible job on trying to sharpen this up. They were just simply trying to run it through a grinder. And I want to go ahead and try to reshape this, take this on back take this edge all the way flat across here you see there's a gouge here at the tip uh, I don't know if you can yeah right there there's a gouge and it's got a really bad belly right here right across this little bit I want to try to take this on down flat across here as well and I'm going to, have to use my bench grinder for that go ahead and take that on down I'm just going to get knock knock this to back go ahead and knock it back with the grinder on this and then later, whenever I get inside and go ahead and start sharpening it, I'll uh, true it, uh, make it, tune it back up again, make it start looking at nice. And I will go ahead and file this down as well to make it flat as well, because it's, it's mushroomed out real bad up here. So 
I'll get you resituated and show you this process.
take these on inside and go ahead and assemble the handle onto the blade and then once all that's set up and cured I'll go ahead and start sanding and that will have to end up being tomorrow so because the glue's got to cure so I'll go ahead and jump on inside and get these put together inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and let them sit overnight and wait on wait on them till tomorrow and I'll be able to start sanding. I'll pick up then. Hey guys, I went ahead and got the handles on those machetes sanded down and whatnot. I wasn't able to get it on video because it's been raining this today and it's just really dark in my shop and the camera I wasn't able to pick it up. Well it's not very well, but this is the the Dissons Disson and Sons one, the slightly larger one. This is what the handle looks like now. As you can tell here, something I don't like about it, but I'm just going to deal with it. Is right here is a pit from a nut, a uh, nut, <laughs> from a knot in the wood and. I really didn't feel like replacing it, so I just went ahead and ran with it. Now I just deal with it. And I was I've been messing with this a little bit, and it doesn't look like it's going to be bothering much of anything. But we'll have to see how that all works out once everything's put together and started actually starting being messed with and whatnot. But this is about what they're supposed to be looking like. I said about. I usually I mean it's kind of hard to mimic just simply pictures without actually looking at it physically so uh, this is the this one sons and this is the other one this one i went ahead and sanded it down it was, it was a it sanded the blade down it did have a green i think it was a green paint coat on it and i went ahead and took that off and here you can just tell, barely tell that it's a little bit shinier 
on that back edge. That was from wherever where it mushroomed out real bad. And got it corrected. Wanted to sharpen it up. Man, a lot of things. This thing has seen some quite a bit of, of abuse. But this is the handle on it. It's a little bit different than the other one, but still fairly close to it. Uh, I will be up here. I'm going to try to end up putting a leather filler in between these these two here. That way it gives it a little bit extra strength there, or at least a little bit of cushion. That way it doesn't, it ha, that hopefully has a less of a chance of breaking on me. So and I'll be doing that on both of them. So I gotta clean, I gotta clean up that groove inside there and try to get a piece of that leather fitted in there and whatnot. I will be polyurethane and coating it, but right now I'm just gonna concentrate on sharpening them up and then I'll go ahead and put a coat, polyurethane coat on them. At least one, maybe two. But it uh, just depends. Over here. Oh, yeah. As you can tell, I'm in a different room. Uh, we had done a bunch of moving around. And this is actually several days after I had actually put the fitted the handles on here. This is actually probably like five days later, six days later. I've just been really ridiculously busy this last week helping people out and whatnot and doing some other things and uh, I had actually went and did, posted a magnet fishing. I was able to do that the other day and so yeah it, uh, I did a bunch of moving around and got into a different room here in the house but it is what it is. So let's go ahead and get you over here and I'll go ahead and start shopping these up. Uh
one side here. This other side is still rather smooth. This one's really, uh, this one's it will be easy to recover, but this side here, it just got, I'm guessing someone took a grinder, like a bench grinder to it, and just went in and out, in and out. I didn't keep it even at all. And it's gonna be a real pain in the butt to freaking do, uh, I'm probably gonna end up cutting it out here and do what I need to do to finish this up. I'll just get to where I can start working it with stones. Yeah, see, I don't know if you can see it here. Oh yeah. See how the darker pits in the edge? That's what I'm talking about. It's just really, really bad. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to see what I can do. Like I said, I'll go ahead and cut you out here. Go ahead and get, do what I can to get, bring it back Bring that edge back. This is going to take me quite a little, quite a long time to do. So I'll pull you back when I can. So be back shortly. All right. So wound up taking it out there and running on my belt sander a little bit. It's kind of a rough hedge, kind of uh, slid on me a little bit, a couple of places. But I got most of it off. I'll have to see what I can do about. Taking it on down to edge. So, let's see what these can do for me.
Okay, so every time I stop and actually look down at it like this, what I'm doing is I'm checking for flat surfaces on top of the edge here. If you remember on this one, I had to knock it back quite a bit to get rid of uh, most of the gouges that were in this blade. Well, whenever I did that, I made a bunch of flat surfaces on here, on, on the edge itself. So when I'm doing uh, whenever I'm doing this, I, that's what I'm checking for is flat surfaces on top of the edge. Whenever I don't see any more, I know that it is done. side here in between here see that gap for the edge I was going to put one there a piece of leather there and add, make it act like a cushion but I don't think I have anything that's that's that is that thin so they are done they are sharpened up pretty good I'm going to go ahead and polyurethane and coat the handles and Yes, I'm going to leave it stained like this to kind of give it that a little bit of a roughed up look. See how both of them came out like that? Because due to my, <laughs> due to me holding on to it, whatnot, it kind of darkened it up a little bit. If I don't know what it was, you can see what it was here. See how bright it is. You can tell it's darkened up a little bit on the handle itself. So I'm going to leave that instead of sanding it back out. So. I'm going to get set up real quick and I gotta find something to stir it with. So I'll be right back. These things sit and dry for some time. I'm probably done messing with these things for today. So, it's already getting late in the evening. So I'm gonna let this thing dry out and we'll take a gander at them later. Hey guys, here are the handles. 
So these are done and they're still a little bit tacky but they're they'll work. Is these are done. This one I'm I'm glad I got done. Cause it took so much work to do, it was ridiculous. And this one is done. This one didn't need a whole heck of a lot of work to do be, uh, to be done on it. So it's it's good to go. Uh, I am primarily worried about this knot on the handle here. I'm worried about it getting uh, it knocking out, and how I'm having to redo the handle again. The reason why I went ahead and went with it was because I was going to go ahead and take the risk of doing it, of of doing that, because it, it takes, as you saw, it takes a while to get these things going. And if this was somebody else's, I wouldn't be doing it. I would, I would go ahead and spend the time to go ahead and redo that handle and make sure it's right. Those are done and ready to rock and roll. I will end up putting a coat of mineral oil on these to make sure to help retain it from, or prevent it, sorry, prevent it from rusting. Oh, well, once they start getting used, it's not really gonna matter that much. So let's go ahead and get a video verse and we'll get it going. All right, we are in James 3, and it's only going to be a couple of verses, but this is uh, James 3, 1 and 2, and it says, Dear brothers and sisters, not many of you should become teachers in the church, for we who teach will be judged more strictly. Indeed, we will make more, uh, many mistakes, for if we could control our tongues, we would be perfect, and we could also control ourselves in every other way. And that was James 3, 1 and 2. And I will see you guys in the next one.